This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is on impact. It's on chapter 15.4 of the book Dynamics by R.C. Hibbler. Today's objectives, you'll be able to understand and analyze the mechanics of impact and analyze the motions of bodies undergoing a collision in both central and oblique cases of impact. We'll cover some applications, define central impact, coefficient of restitution, and oblique impact. So the quality of a tennis ball is measured by the height of its bounce, and we quantify that by something called the coefficient of restitution, and we'll go over that in detail in this lecture. So if the height from which the ball is dropped and the height of its bounce are known, how can we determine the coefficient of restitution? So impact occurs when two bodies collide during a very short time period. It caused, this causes large impulsive forces to be exerted between the bodies at the point of impact here. Uh, common examples are a hammer hitting a nail or a ball being hit by a bat. Now the line of impact is defined as through the mass centers of the colliding particles. And in general there are two types of impacts. There's central impact on the top here and oblique. So central impact occurs when the incoming velocities here and here are along the line of impact. Oblique impact on the bottom here occurs when the directions of the incoming velocities are oblique or not parallel to the line of impact. So let's go over central impact in a little more detail. So this happens when the velocities of the two objects are along the line of impact. So once the particles are in contact, they may deform as uh, if they're non-rigid, but in any case, the, some energy is transferred between the particles. Now there are two primary equations we use when we solve impact problems. So we have these two balls colliding along the line of impact. So the initial velocity and initial velocity. So for the system of particles, there are no external forces in the x direction here. So we can say that momentum will be conserved in the x direction. So we can write that as the mass of A times the initial velocity of A before impact. So the 1 means before impact plus the mass of B times this velocity before impact is equal to the mass of A times its velocity after impact. So I'll represent that by a 2 plus the mass of B times the velocity of B after impact. So this is one equation. This is conservation of linear momentum in the x direction. But we still have two unknowns. I mean, typically we know the initial velocities, uh, but we don't, we have two unknowns, right? The velocities of each ball after impact. So we need another equation, and for that we'll turn to the coefficient of restitution. So the coefficient of restitution is the ratio of the particle's relative separation velocities after impact to the relative approach velocity before impact. So let's write that as an equation. So coefficient of restitution is denoted by E. So that's equal to the separation velocity after impact. Now that's the relative separation velocity. So that will be the velocity of B after impact minus the velocity of A after impact. And divide that by the particle's relative approach velocities. So that'll be the velocity of A before impact minus the velocity of B before impact. So if the value for E is specified, this will give us our, the other equation we need to solve the problem. So in general, E is between 0 and 1. And there are two limiting conditions here. So when E is equal to 0, we call that plastic impact. So in this case, the relative mm -hmm. separation velocity is 0. The particles stick together and they move with a common velocity after impact. And the other limit is when E is equal to 1, and we call that elastic impact. Now in a perfectly elastic collision, no energy is lost, and the relative separation velocity equals the relative approach velocities. In practical situations, this condition cannot be achieved. Here's some typical values of E. Now steel on steel between 0.5 and 0.8, lead on lead between 0.12 and 0.18, wood on wood between 0.4 and 
and glass on glass is very high between 0.93 and 0.95. So let's talk about energy losses. You know, once the particle's velocities before and after the collision have been determined, we can calculate the energy loss during the collision based on the differences in the particle's kinetic energy. So the energy loss is equal to the kinetic energy after impact minus the kinetic energy before impact. Now that sum means we're going to do it for all the particles in the system. And remember that kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So let's talk about oblique impact. In this case, one or both of the particles' motion is at an angle to the line of impact. So as you can see here, the initial velocities of A and B are at some angle to this line of impact. The four equations required to solve for the unknowns are, first, the conservation of momentum and the coefficient of restitution, which we just went over, are applied in the x direction along the line of impact. Okay, so let's do that. So conservation momentum in the x direction for the system of particles. So before impact, the mass times the velocity. So the mass of A times the velocity of A in the x direction. That's before impact. So nomenclature gets a little hairy here. So this just means I'm talking about particle A in the x direction before impact, plus the mass of B times its velocity in the x direction before impact. We set that equal to the linear momentum after impact, so it's the mass of A times the velocity of A in the x direction after impact, plus the mass of B times the velocity of B in the x direction after impact. So there's one equation. The coefficient of restitution equation We'll apply that in the x direction. So it is equal to the relative separation velocities in the x direction. So that'll be the velocity of b in the x direction after impact minus the velocity of a in the x direction after impact divided by the velocity of a in the x direction before impact minus the velocity of b in the x direction before impact. That's the, another equation. Now in the y direction, for each particle we can say that the linear momentum is conserved, right, because the impulsive force on the ball is in the x direction, right? There are no forces in the y direction, so the momentum must be conserved for each particle in the y direction. So the way we write that is the mass of A times its velocity in the y direction before impact is equal to the mass of A times its velocity in the y direction after impact. And likewise for ball B, the mass of B times its velocity in the y direction before impact is equal to the mass of B times its velocity in the y direction after impact. So this is another two equations. So there are your four equations you need to solve oblique impact problems. Okay, let's go over a procedure you can use to analyze these problems. Uh, in most problems, the initial velocities are known and the coefficient of restitution is known, and we want to determine the final velocities. So first, as always, define your coordinate system. Typically, the x-axis is along the line of impact, and the y-axis uh, is perpendicular to, to the x-axis and in the plane of contact. So for both central and oblique impact problems, we use these two equations, right? Linear momentum for a system of particles is conserved and the equation for the coefficient of restitution. And you apply these along the line of impact, the x direction. For oblique impact problems, you need more equations. So what we say is that the momentum of each particle in the y direction is conserved. So that equation you see here and here. So let's do an example. So this ball strikes the smooth wall with a velocity of 20 meters per second. The coefficient of restitution between the ball and the wall is 0 0.75. So the ball is coming in at this velocity at 30 degrees to the x-axis hits the wall and bounces off. 
well, where's the other particle? What's, what's going on here? Well, the other particle is the wall. And since the wall is so huge in comparison to the ball, we can say that its velocity after impact is going to be zero. So we want to find the velocity of the ball after impact. So this is an oblique impact with a line of uh, impact perpendicular to the plane. So momentum is conserved along the wall in the y direction. And we'll use the coefficient of restitution in the x direction. So first let's do the momentum of the ball is conserved in the y direction. So that means the mass times the velocity of the ball before impact in the y direction. So that's going to be times the sine of 30 is equal to the mass of the ball times its velocity after impact in the y direction, so it'll be times sine of theta. Now the masses will cancel. The initial velocity was given as 20. Sine of 30 is a half, so this means that 10 is equal to V, V2, sine of theta. So there's one equation. And now we'll apply the coefficient of restitution equation along the line of impact in the x direction. So that would be the ratio of the relative separation velocities over the relative approach velocity in the x direction. So we can write that as E is equal to the velocity of, in this case, the wall, which is zero, minus the final velocity in the x direction, divided by the relative approach velocities in the x direction. So that'll be the velocity of B in the x direction before impact, and the velocity of the wall before impact is zero. So the coefficient of restitution was given as 0.75. That's equal to uh, zero minus. Now the velocity of the ball in the x direction after impact in our coordinate system, that's going to be negative. So it's minus the velocity of the ball after impact times cosine of theta. It's very important to get the signs correct here. Divide that by the velocity of the ball in the x direction before impact. So that's going to be 20 cosine of 30, and it's positive. Minus 0. So when you simplify this, you can say the velocity of the ball after impact times cosine of theta is equal to 12.99. So now I have two equations, two unknowns, and we can solve. It comes out the velocity of the ball after impact is 16.4 meters per second, and theta is 37.6 degrees. Let's do another problem. This girl throws the ball with a horizontal velocity of 8 feet per second. And the coefficient of restitution from the ball and the ground is 0.8. Find the velocity at A, the rebounding velocity, so we want the velocity at A after impact, and the maximum height that the ball will reach after the first bounce. We're going to use the equations of motion for a projectile to find the velocity of the ball when it strikes the ground. Then we'll use our impact equations to find the velocity of the ball after it hits the ground. And then we can use our equations of motion for, for a projectile to determine h. So first we'll do the projectile motion in the y direction between uh, the release point and point A. So the equation for constant acceleration in the y direction for a projectile is the velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction squared uh, minus 2g delta y. So we can calculate the velocity at A in the y direction. It is uh, the initial velocity in the y direction, which is zero, right? All the velocity is in the x direction, initial velocity. So it's zero minus two times 32.2 times delta y. Now delta y goes down three feet, so it's negative minus three. And the velocity at point A in the y direction comes out to be 13.9 feet per second, and it's down. So now we know the y component of the velocity at A 
So let's do the coefficient of restitution in the y direction. So the equation for coefficient of restitution is the uh, the velocity of the ground after impact minus the velocity of a the velocity at a in the y direction after impact divided by the velocity at point a in the y direction before impact minus the velocity of the ground before impact. Now, of course, the velocity of the ground is going to be zero. So this comes out to be 0 0.8 is equal to 0 minus the velocity of point A in the y direction after impact divided by uh, the velocity at, at A in the y direction before impact, which we just calculated to be 13.9, it's negative. So we can solve these two equations and come up with the velocity at point A in the y direction after impact is 11.12 feet per second. And that's positive upwards. So now we have the velocity in the y direction before impact and after impact. So the next step is to apply the conservation of momentum to the system in the x direction. So at point A in the x direction, let's put our coordinate frame on here again. So the mass times the initial velocity in the x direction is equal to the mass times the velocity at point A in the x direction. So the masses cancel and of course we find that the velocity of A in the x direction is equal to 8 feet per second. You could have determined that just from the projectile equations as well. You may remember that the velocity in the x direction for a projectile is constant, so it's always going to be 8 feet per second. So now we have the complement of the velocity in the x direction at point A, so we can write out the velocity at A is equal to 8 in the I plus 11.12 in the J feet per second. So now we know the velocity at point A, and we'll use our projectile equations to determine the maximum height. So the equation we'll use is the velocity squared is the initial velocity squared minus 2g delta y. So the velocity in the y direction at this point right here is 0. So 0 squared. The initial velocity at point A in the y direction is 11.12 squared. Uh, minus 2 times 32.2 times the change in height, so that'll be times h minus 0. And you can solve this for h, it's 1.92 feet. This concludes 15.4, impact. Next up is 15.5 through 15.7, angular momentum.